Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm 20. Do you easily do something on a dare? Do you often find yourself in difficult situations just because you wanted to prove something to someone? Watch this video to the end and find out how one argument turned into my first time. And that was just the beginning of my problems. I'm a college student and I do not deny myself the pleasures of student life. So I got a boyfriend, Greg. Everything was great, except for one little problem. I'm still a virgin. I'm not saving myself for a wedding or anything like that, but I wasn't ready. That's why we were fighting. The more pressure Greg put on me, the less I wanted to. And then he left me for a more positive girl. We didn't see each other for a month. Our classes didn't match and our mutual friends separated. I thought my feelings about him had subsided. Out of sight, out of mind. And then we accidentally crossed paths on campus. He was with his new girlfriend and in the company of mutual friends. They greeted me and he pretended not to know me at all. I was angry and offended. I was filled with a storm of emotions. And I suggested to my friends to go binge drinking in the club. I put on my makeup put on my sexiest clothes, put condoms in my purse, and went to meet them. I felt great. Have you ever allowed your emotions to lead you while you were on a wave of anger and resentment? Greg left me because I denied him, and he was going to regret it. I think after the fifth cocktail, my friends and I started arguing, and I said something like, Do you want me to seduce any guy here on a dare? My friends were as drunk as I was, and they started to egg me on. We chose a nice guy on the dance floor, and I went to conquer him. What fun we had! After a couple of songs, we moved to the bar, and from there to the toilet. Why not? We were adults, and with condoms, what could go wrong? The sex was quick and pleasant. But when the euphoria subsided, I looked at myself in the mirror and couldn't believe it. My first time was in the bathroom of a club with a guy I didn't know. Was this really what I wanted? Was it worth to refuse Greg for so long if it ended like this? I ran out of the bathroom, said goodbye to my friends, called a taxi, and went home. In the morning I had a headache from drinking and I felt like a complete fool. I didn't have anything to blame the guy for, but it was a mistake. As if to have a laugh, the universe bumped me into Greg the next day. Winking at me actively, he said that he heard that I had become more relaxed and that we could try again. Ew, I was so disgusted and I absolutely refused. Greg muttered something about me finding a boyfriend as soon as he turned away. As if he hadn't found a girl for himself right after our breakup. But this was not the worst of troubles. On the third week after that night at the club, washing in the morning, I suddenly realized my period was late. A cold sweat broke out on my face. I rushed to the packet of condoms and realized with horror, the pack was long overdue. I could be pregnant by a strange guy I had slept with drunk at a club. At the nearest pharmacy, I bought three packs of different pregnancy tests. According to the instructions, the test should be done in the morning. So I had to go to classes not knowing. Have you ever had a bad decision under the influence of emotions turn into a real disaster? I was barely on time for a class, took my place in the first row next to my friend, relaxed, and then the same guy came into the audience. The guy turned out to be Alex, a graduate student of our teacher who was ill and asked Alex to replace him. I sat through the entire lecture in a daze and only vaguely realized that I had to go up to him and pick up the tasks. I was shaking so much that I accidentally dropped my backpack. All its contents were on the floor. Alex and I rushed to collect it. He silently handed me a stack of pregnancy tests, looked at me, and his eyes widened. He recognized me. I turned pale, put what I could into my backpack, and ran out of the classroom. I rushed to the bathroom. 
I was sick with nerves. I washed my face with cold water and almost cried. I barely sat through the classes. It was even worse when I went to bed. I couldn't sleep half the night, tossing and turning, and couldn't find peace whatsoever. In the morning, I did all the tests at once. I almost cried with relief. All three were negative. I would have to go to the doctor, of course, but still, I was probably not pregnant. I went to college elated and happy, almost dancing, and did not notice how I bumped into Alex. He asked if I needed help. No, I said, it's fine. Only I haven't looked at the assignments yet. I thought he was even more embarrassed than I was. He told me to come to him if I needed anything, and then he left. Do you know that feeling when everything seems to end well, but you still expect something else to happen at the last moment? Everything went back to normal. We went to lectures. Alex was filling in for a professor. And I was trying to figure out if my stupid adventure was going to cause me any problems. I ran into Greg a couple of times, but we didn't talk, and I tried not to look at him. Two weeks later, our professor returned. He asked me specifically to pick an aspect of a very interesting topic that he was working on himself for my course topic. I immediately agreed. It was only later that I found out that I would have to work with Alex, whose specific work was related to that topic and who could help me a lot. I couldn't refuse. And the work began. We sat in the library. He was very helpful, and it just made me nervous and angry. But what could I say? Don't talk to me like that. You didn't get me pregnant. Tension was building up inside me, and needed to get out. And then one day, when Alex once again very nicely pushed my chair back, I exploded. I started yelling at him. I was mad at him for being so thoughtful and polite, for sleeping with me, for being dumped by a guy. Heck, how angry I was. He could barely calm me down and sent me home. When I left, people were watching me. The next day, the professor texted me that I no longer needed to work with Alex because Alex might be facing a disciplinary committee. Was this about my tantrum? The same day, I went to the professor and asked him to explain everything to me. Alex had not yet been suspended from teaching, but he might have problems. An affair with a student. Possible abuse of position. But that was not true, I exclaimed. It was just a stupid combination of circumstances. There was nothing between us. The professor said that the disciplinary committee would look into it, and if it found that Alex had acted inappropriately, it could cost him his career. A person could be fired because of my lack of restraint and the fact that I got drunk from resentment. My actions seemed so childish that I felt ashamed. I told the professor that I was prepared to defend Alex on the panel. The professor cheered up and promised to do everything he could. It was not enough for me to have one problem as I came face to face with my ex. He was oozing sympathy, saying he'd heard some terrible rumors and all. Honestly, I wasn't up for it, which was what I said. Do you think that stopped him? One day he caught me near the department where I was taking my coursework to be checked by the professor and started picking on me. I tried to get rid of him, unsuccessfully. Alex came out of the faculty door because of the noise. It was the first time we met after my tantrum. Greg was annoyed that I wasn't paying attention to him, and he grabbed my elbow roughly and started shaking me. Alex frowned and told Greg to leave me alone, to which Greg replied that he would not be able to use his position as a graduate student for long. He had already taken care of it. That's what that was? If Greg heard my screams in the library, and reported Alex, Ooh, I could have strangled Greg myself. Alex almost hit Greg, but I managed to grab his arm, and I suggested that Greg come to the committee and repeat the same thing, only to the face of the teachers. He really had to speak at the committee, and then I came forward and explained that Greg had a problem with me, not Alex, and that this was how he was trying to get back at me. And, by the way, he didn't let me pass in the corridors and persistently talked about sex. 
guess who ended up being suspended for the rest of the semester? And Alex and I continued to work on the material for my coursework and his research work. No more stupid arguments, just pure science. Don't forget to like this video so that as many people as possible know our story and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss new videos. And try not to do anything stupid. Who knows how it might end?